Hi everyone, welcome back to my next video. Uh, we just made a new friend, David. How's it going? And we just finished a uh, an, inter an interview with him about his truck camper, his work of art truck camper. And in today's video, we're actually going to go inside and look around and see all the details and how he built it and lots of really good stuff for you to figure out for yourself. Uh, so go be sure right now and go back and watch that video or you're going to be kind of lost about a lot, a lot of what we're going to talk about now. And David, if they want to go back to your channel now, uh, tell us your channel. It's Endgame on YouTube, one word. And, but if you were to search it, just search Endgame Truck Camper and uh, it'll pop, you'll find it. And we'll have a link down below. All right, let's take a look at the, your camper. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so this camper, the portion that's visible here is primarily made of cedar, uh, and that includes the framing. And uh, the cedar was actually sourced from cedar fence pickets, believe it or not, uh, that I just bought at Lowe's. Now, the real advantage of using the cedar, though, is it's dimensionally stable, uh, which is a big important part when you're making a solid wood structure. Uh, it's resistant to rot and the effects of environment. And it's also very lightweight, uh, which is a key element of this. Uh, this camper, uh, without the battery and water, came in at just under 800 pounds, which That's is amazing. kind of unprecedented in the truck camper world. That's astounding. Yeah, now with water and batteries and gear and stuff like that, it, it definitely is uh, tipping just over a thousand, but that's still very unprecedented, so. It is. I get relatively the same gas mileage. Um, sometimes, I know it's a bit hard to believe, but I don't even notice it's back there. Uh, the only time where I really notice a substantial change in drivability is with a, uh, a big headwind. So uh, everything is handmade, including the door on this. Um, uh, I did, you know, security was an aspect. So though most of this is made out of cedar, one of the downsides of cedar is it's a little bit soft. So I did incorporate some other species of wood. So in the door frame, for example, this is oak. And I use just a residential lock set. So, so it's actually pretty secure, probably more so than most RVs. Right now, folks, you might think, what's that noise? Well, that's the air conditioner. Yeah. You've got it set up to run an air conditioner. Yeah, so one of the things is I live in the desert and uh, more so than cold is I had to contend with cooling. So I put a lot of thought uh, and energy into, is there a way that I could put an air conditioner in this that's modular, not very expensive, and most importantly, run it off grid. And the solution I came up with was using just a simple 5,000 BTU residential window unit. And then the heart of the electrical system is a large solar generator. And for those who may not be familiar, a solar generator is a three-in-one device. It has a big lithium ion battery, a charge controller to handle the solar, and uh, an inverter. And in this case, I have 400 watts of solar. So um, this AC, uh, I'm still testing it, but um, you know I, I know I can at least run it for a number of hours a day. It's probably not something I could run continuously, but when you consider it's off-grid and the size of this unit, uh, it, I think it's a, uh, something that you don't see most of the time. Right, very rarely. So let's, let's talk about uh, that idea of modularity and, that, and my approach in the system. So like we talked about the AC unit, it was inexpensive, and if this 5,000 BTU unit fails, they're all relatively the same size. I could pull it out and replace it. Now, the, electri the electrical system in here, um, I had built a previous camper and actually bought all the individual components and constructed them, but what I found was that the solar generators, the price and the, and the capability of them are actually changing so much with the market that in this case, I actually chose just to use the solar gen. Um, if you guys are curious, this is a Blue Eddy EB2400. I will admit they're, they're very pricey, but if you can swing it, I think it's a nice modular, simplistic approach to the electrical system. So these cabinets, I used a, a premium pine, pine product, which is a little bit more dense than the cedar. But the larger point of that is, all of these cabinets are not just attached on the inside, they, actual, they actually form a structural component of the camper itself. And that was a key element to keeping, the light, to keeping it light and maximizing the space. Now, I, I choose to carry a, um, a 45 liter, I believe, or a quart. Um, this is just a compressor, a DC compressor fridge. Um, I just leave it running all the time and this particular one's worked out well for me. In, in my design process, um, it was important for me to have 
a seating space. Um, so what I did right here, these are all handmade cushions, but I have a small little seating space and I have this table, which is all handmade, and it's on a lagoon mount. Mm -hmm. um, so this lagoon mount allows it to move so you can get in and out, and then I can remove the table, and I have a mechanism to where I can pull the back cushions and actually create a third bed down here. These are made out of cedar, and they're hinged, right? And what they do is I can open it, and they nest on this back wall so they don't, aff they don't affect the livability of the space, but I actually put a one inch thick, which is gonna be R5 of XPS or extruded polystyrene wrapped in fabric. And I can close this and it, and it provides not only uh, privacy, but it provides uh, excellent insulation ca capacity for the windows themselves, which is a huge portion of loss. Um, so this is a cab over section. I mean, there's not a lot to say here. Um, uh, this may be too small for some, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. You know, little decorative elements, and this kind of comes down to the idea of recycling. So this right here, this wall, this is legitimate pallet wood. Uh, my, uh, my kids and I were out exploring in the desert by an old mine and found this, and we brought it home, and I trimmed it up and planed it down, and, and we actually used this to make a, the wall. So this is the kitchen area. Now we're gonna go back to that idea of modularity and using what you have. So in my case, a lot of people build in a fixed stove mm -hmm. and I didn't want to. I wanted to have as much counter space as I can. So my stove solution is just down in this cabinet. I just have a standard two burner stove and I actually made a little channel for oh, it. Oh yeah, look at that. Can't bounce around. Yeah, I made a little channel for it and it just sits right here. And then when I want to use it, I just simply put it right here on here on, on this counter space and, uh, and go from there. So, the sink and the water system in here is very modular and very easy. What I did is I purchased two of, if you guys can see them back here, mm -hmm. I purchased two of these seven gallon uh, water containers. Uh, and there's another one over here. I strapped them down, but here's what I did to deliver the water. So right up here is a USB device. I've seen them only on Amazon. I don't even know what you'd call them, but they're kind of a three in one unit. They're in the shape of a faucet. They have a battery and they have a pump in them. So what I did, these were meant to go on like one of those five gallon uh, water jugs like you would see in an office or something. Mm -hmm. I was able to find some PVC fitting that fit in here. I put the little plastic thing and then this is just a friction fit. And then I put a hose on there. And what I did is I draped, I ran that hose and actually plugged it right into these seven gallon containers. And then this is just the ubiquitous bowl Multiple. sink that we've all Salad seen. Bowl, yeah. And, and then this just runs right there like that. Right. And then uh, in my case, I just, uh, I just have the water dump out the side. I know okay. it sounds maybe unorthodox, oh. but it's, uh, it's usually not an issue. And then the advantage though, is this is all modular. If this pump fails, I literally in about a minute could pull it off and put another one on. And they're relatively inexpensive. I always carry a spare with me. So I think one final thing I wanna mention about the build in here is going back to the insulation. If you guys notice here, this wall surface is actually just uh, EPS or expanded polystyrene two inches thick foam board. Just, you could buy it right there at Lowe's or Home Depot. And I took a fabric, in this case, duck, and I used an adhesive and actually wrapped the insulation with this fabric and then put it in between the wall spacers of the structure. And the real advantage of that was it was lightweight. I didn't have to sheathe the inside of the camper with quarter inch ply or Luon or something like that. One other thing is bathroom. Bob, you didn't right. ask. No, we haven't gotten there yet, have we? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so what, I, what I do is down here, um, yeah, I actually, this, this rug just comes up. I just like a rug in here is uh, I actually just have a little porta potty. Uh -huh, sure. So I, I, I have just a, a door here that latches and, uh, and that's what I use for the restroom. And I like the porta potty. I, I, I know a lot of people aren't fans of it, but it works well for me. There's little mm -hmm. drops that you put in there that, that keep, I haven't had an issue with smell. All right, one more question I have to ask. Okay. I always have to ask, how do you shower then? Well, it, I would just use one of those solar showers or you know go to a gym or you know just wash up in the sink kind of thing. So that, that is one thing, this camper largely pretty much has everything, but that is the one thing it does not have space for. There's no 
dedicated shower space in here. So you guys may have noticed I have a, a shotgun right here. Um, I'll admit when I first put it in here, it was more of a decorative element. I thought it just kind of fit with the cabin feel. But, you know, I think this is an important thing. And I think another thing to consider, though, is this is just a single barrel, 12 gauge uh, brake barrel action shotgun. Um, and from a gun control standpoint, those of us who are traveling, gun laws are varied and significantly different from state to state. Now, I'm not uh, presenting to be an expert on gun laws, but when I put this in there, my selection was based on the idea that I felt that this was a less likely to be illegal in any kind of jurisdiction. So it, you know, it just kind of fit with the theme, but, that, but I guess for those who may want to carry firearms, I think the very important thing is to realize that it, you have to be very careful with what you carry because they're not always lawful in every jurisdiction you go to. So that was one of the philosophies with the choice of this in this particular situation. Going back to the AC, some of you guys uh, who are keen on the window units might have wondered how I ventilate it. And just in short, the window units have kind of a, a dual split system. They have an exhaust that blows the hot air over the condenser and they have intakes on the side. What I did to make, uh, I didn't want a window unit hanging out the back of the camper, so I wanted to conceal. So what I did is I built this hatch right here. And, and if you, I don't know if it'll show up, but there's actually a ducting system that separates the heated exhaust as it's blown out from the intake that goes in. So David, thank you so much for sharing your home with us and your journey. Uh, it is fantastic. It might be one of the one of the best I've ever seen. Thank you. Lots I'll, of creative ideas too. Yeah. Well, thank you, Bob. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate your time. And uh, I hope your audience can take something from this. And just remember, it's not all about having to build this whole camper. You can just take some of the ideas and incorporate in your build. Absolutely. Uh, so tell us again uh, how they can follow you on YouTube. So uh, Endgame Truck Camper. If you just search that, or there will probably be a, you guys will link it up in there, my understanding. We sure will. And uh, as of right now, I've got an entire interactive build series, uh, and I really am encouraging uh, a lot of interaction from the audience out there. And I am incorporating a lot of lives in the build. So, you know, if you guys really want to ask a lot of detailed questions or have the opportunity to share your creations or provide insight that might be helpful to me, uh, it's a great platform that I'm trying to build for that. You bet. Everyone should go right now and sign up. In-game truck camper. So, folks, I know you've gotten a lot out of these two videos. So, uh, if you did, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, and we'll talk to you later. Thanks, David. Mm -hmm.